So, welcome back to this. I figured out how to change the thing. So, um. I know, Sam looks thirsty. Maybe you should make him slam a monster. <laughs> in a minute, in a minute. <laughs> Let me just. We kind of knew where this was going to go the second we found out how to change the colour of the You're hat. You're not, are you? <laughs> we, <laughs> we kind of knew where this was going to go. <laughs> well, he is, what, making America great again? Oh, fucking brilliant. I can make him look like a really shit Green Lantern card. I think with the red mask makes him a bit look like Joker. Or we just go full white. White looks better. Red, white, and blue, so the red and the white, maybe. Honestly, I kind of just gonna go with my signature thing of purple if that's cool. Purple and red, alright. I enjoy purple immensely. Honestly, it's not I'm not, it's not because of the MAGA hat, it's because of that seventy dollar persona hat that I bought. <laughs> yeah. That was seventy dollars? <laughs> I spent so Oh no, why don't I have <laughs> any money? Yeah. I spent seventy dollars on a on like a custom made persona hat, and Sam's really fucking annoyed with me. But like, my argument seventy dollar Brody statue. No, no, that was fifty dollars, sixty dollars. Oh, okay, it's only sixty. But um, <laughs> my argument is, I put the overtime in specifically to buy that hat. I'll buy it if I fucking want. Of all the uh, stuff you bought, you could probably afford to rent somewhere in London, a good part of London, for like a year straight. Pro Wait, what? <laughs> Don't be shy. Just like we used to. Come oh, on. God, it's that movie with Patrick Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> what, Ghost? <laughs> yeah, is that the one? I don't know which one you're referencing. The one where Patrick Swayze's, like, dad, but he dances with the woman. Uh, Ghost. Okay. Today's mommy's birthday. She's 21 now. For sake's sake. Over the anniversary of when we first met. She's in the fucking test pod from Portal. No, I was just assuming that he had to get some intern to just like hold the baby there so he got a good view. And so some intern has been like paid minimum wage just to stand there holding the baby. <laughs> While Patty dances around the room. Yep. I can't remember if we actually took the del right, Hang on a second. Four containers of aid. Wait, what is the explanation for the bad say? Uh, for the hat say? Slightly reduces stamina consumption. Mark of their talent. <laughs> oh, good. The gut smoke tat is a really fucking good hat, though. Oh, dear. So, what, when you were in the streets of the city we're currently in, um, I know we only just moved here and started unpacking after last time, but when you walk down the street, people just keep saying to you, looking cool, Joker. No, but it's really... And they say, oh, thank you. Then the literally next person you see, looking cool, Joker. <laughs> um, right, okay. You should get some sleep. <laughs> no, it's really funny, though, because um, I, people do keep routinely mistaking me for wearing a MAGA hat when they see me from behind. <laughs> Which, in all fairness, is partly what I was going for. So what, then they just shout, this is MAGA country, put a noose over their own neck and run away? <laughs> so, <laughs> so is, is, Ma, what was that? You need to... Ex Jesse Smollett, haven't I said that? Uh, some guy in Atlanta, I think, uh, Atlanta or Chicago, claimed that he was assaulted by two people in MAGA hats that uh, attacked him and then uh, tried to uh, choke him with a rope. They just happened to be carrying it late at night. Because it's having like midnight. I don't believe this at all. Oh, and it gets funnier because it turns out he hired two African men to do it. Uh, to um, kind of play the part. How fucking incompetent can you be if your own fake political story? Oh shit, I found a turbo button. And uh, he said that, yeah, this is at midnight, just walking through the streets of Chicago, these two people wearing mag hats just happened to have rope on them. Would, yeah, there's, some, there's more holes in, it, in the piece of cheese in this story. Now apparently he's suing the city for defamation when they realised he was full of shit. <laughs> I 
fucking make it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just smashing every time he comes in. Uh, the engineer is just like, what the hell did you put this bike for? Well, you see, I was going full turbo and decided to run it into a river and then crashed into a rock under the river, or in the river. Right. Um, don't ever come back here again. I can't. I don't know how to turn the turbo off. <laughs> yeah, maybe you shouldn't have had that third monster. It's got to go fast. That's one of the best. Right, you haven't seen Sonic Boom yet, have you? Uh, only that one episode which you should. The jokes, the jokes are so amazingly fucking self-aware, but like this one in particular that's become a meme room. He gets a speeding ticket in one episode, and then um, his reaction is, I could probably fight it in court, but I don't think they're going to accept going to go fast as a medical condition. <laughs> oh god, the jokes are so fucking good in that show. Here, check my pants. Oh dear, I didn't even bring any weapons this time. But I don't think Eggman ever really carries weapons. They can't drag you to hell if you're on a bike, right? <laughs> I don't want to find out, so um... We'd go full like Ghost Rider, we're just riding away and the... Uh, hi oh wait, Highway Star can catch up to a motorbike, can't it? Only if we drop below 70 miles an hour. Okay. 60. Yeah, that was at 65. There was um, a Funko Pop of Ghost Rider, but um, it's not the regular. It's not the regular Ghost Rider, it's from the Only Universe ones. Is it the one from um, Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. where he's in the car? No, because he's like the reg he's the main universe Ghost Rider. He's just the set he's just the first Ghost Rider. The third? We'll get into this in a second. I thought it went, uh, Nick Cage was the one who gave him his power suit. I mean, in the comics. Oh, right. Because his original Ghost Rider, then for a brief period, there was another Ghost Rider who got his powers from a motorcycle with Celtic runes on it. Are we actually going to try and push our lock here? You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of ninjas can't catch you if you're on fire. What? It sounds was, like something in uh, Duckman Ninja. Was that's because it's, that's what it's from. It's from the one where they have to fight that character who's a parody of Van Damme. Oh. I didn't get that far into it. That's like the second fucking story arc. I read the one. Ah! <laughs> I read the one where it's his origins, his family's origin story. Uh, I read the one with the uh, guy so muscular he drew he grew a jetpack. And this is like a story arc shortly after that. Oh. Sorry, you have to throw a grenade if you're in blood. Ah, shit. It's the world's best game of the floor is lava. We really need to... Stop nope. running cap first to beat it. Okay, yeah, in all fairness, that kind of surprised me though, because I genuinely thought the bike would outrun them before they could drop to hands. Let me just slowly climb away from the fish. Which fucking range is it up? Why are you going back into the black sludge? Fish has too much fucking range. Yeah, because you're in the water. It's like, I know, I'm going to escape this shark by diving into the water. Well, no, could the sludge... I can outswim it. The sludge is its range. Yeah. Can receive likes from the fucking baby. <laughs> Whatever, it's over. I'm gonna go get the bike. So what we need to do is, when we see the hands coming for us, we need to destroy the bike, fly through the air, and then repair it once we're clear. Yes. I'm still. Re I'm. I'm really fucking annoyed that they just immediately grab you. Like, 
I was honestly expecting to like actually have a highway star moment, and I'm disappointed they didn't think that far ahead programming wise. You'll probably patch it in. Safe! Wait, there's something over there. I mean, that's additional cargo. That's not what we came in with. Oh, cool. We've got an additional bar of stamina. Yeah, it's because you slammed that monster. Oh, yeah. For sorry, I forgot that I increased our stamina bar. By 10%. Oh, the ghost drained my battery. <laughs> Um, Wait, maybe chili is infected with chili pepper. Okay, I, I have a vague, vague idea here. Um, That's the incinerator. Is that? Yeah. Oh, um, that's stretch my legs. Just gonna have to leave it here. Oh, yeah. What, were you going to fill up the tank that way? It's like, oh, it's out of fuel, better empty the tank into the tank. Okay, if I assume that people online are going to have the same idea as me, roughly. Can you imagine if there's uh, just another porter in there burning something, and he's just looking out the window while it's happening, and he just sees... Uh, Sam building this off to the side. No, I was going to say, emptying his tank into the tank to refuel it. It's just like, what is the man doing? That bike's electric. Like, oh, yeah, there we go. Should be all filled now. That's a good point, though. We should take a piss on the electric fence. <laughs> Do you think Kojima would have programmed that in? <laughs> I should. What? Let's find out! It would just be a death curdling scream and say, like, Sam, what are you doing? Sam, Sam! That's like game over. I swear to god, that was one of the best fucking splices that someone phoned in Ghost of was Ghost taking a piss on the electric fence. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it make the baby happier? Uh, maybe the baby has some unresolved issues. <laughs> <laughs> they paid a man to do this. Uh, it's the fact like, voice the line he's actually something. programmed to turn around though if you try and flip the camera. Yeah, so from this angle, the guy's probably watching us, so after filling up the tank, he's now just getting rid of the rest of it. How much did the guy drink? How many monsters does he have to slam? Not enough. Oh, you're just drinking some more now? God damn it. All the monsters got out of my system. You put some more back in. <laughs> right, um... Stop over at the other way station and charge the bike. Didn't you literally just charge it? Hmm. Yeah, no, that's a waste of shitload of power going on the fucking hill, though. Especially with the mod times I crash into rocks. OH <laughs> SHIT! <laughs> So, yeah, touch other people's corpses before you own. Connect with as many as you can. So, no, don't do it yet. Is that not someone else's corpse? No, that's yours. Where's another corpse? There. Go towards the... I got it. This stone ocean? Oh god. See, look at all these people you could connect with. Wait, does that start a fucking voice out if he dies? No. He can survive void out of that. Oh, thank god for that.
Does this mean we've lost the bike? Probably. What's the fucking penalty for falling off a cliff is what I want to know. Right, so, um... Oh, you picked up their cargo. Lost the fucking bike. Don't mind me. God. Reminds me, I only watched the first episode of this, but there's a semi-recent TV series where it's the actor who played Reed Richards in the like, early 2000s Fantastic Four. He plays an immortal doctor. But he's several hundred years old then. Uh, throughout his life, he's always a doctor, just because that's his passion. Mm -hmm. And so he's one of the best in the world just because he's lived that long, he knows all the secrets. His immortality is a very weird thing though. When he dies, his body disappears and then he just respawns, like in perfect health, nearby. No, he doesn't respawn in his body, his body just, like, when it's dead, it disappears immediately and then he just respawns immediately somewhere nearby. Uh huh. I thought that was the weirdest form of immortality I've seen. Because he like, accidentally gets into a car wreck on a bridge, because it's based in New York. Then he like, teleports like, just above the sea and like, drops into the uh, sea and has to swim to shore. I mean, my response to that is don't forget the bark and immortality. Well, that's just the immune to damage, isn't it? They no, no, because remember, like, all of the all of their body literally reverses. Like, everything in their body literally flows backwards until it reforms into a complete body. Yep. Because they don't respawn. It's literally just like all the pieces move back together. Okay, it's a plot point in one novel that um, one guy can't grow his eye back because some asshole's keeping it in a jar somewhere. But, like the rest of the socket's fine. That guy's fucking weird. Weirdest forms of immortality though, um. I can't remember what it was, but there was one where um, this guy, every time he... D it's similar to the one you've described. Like, his body crumbles to dust, and then just, like, another one fucking appears. Mm -hmm. It's not the same move. It's not the same thing you're thinking of, but it's similar. But, um, they play it for comedy, though, because, like, every time he respawns, he just, like, suddenly walks out from, like, behind the block of the camera, basically. Mm -hmm. Or like behind doorways and shit, and everyone's like, "How do you keep doing that?" It was an American film, but like I couldn't say what it was called. Right, bullet point number one: get another bike. Yeah, okay, I might just say, "Yeah, I need another bike." Well, we gave you a bike. Oh, didn't you have one? Yeah, I kind of ran off the cliff. Why? Um, I used the boost button and didn't know how to turn it off. God damn it, not again. It wasn't even that I used the boost button, it was just that I missed a cliff. It, I missed that that was a cliff on the map. Whatever, it's fine, we're almost there. Just gonna avoid the second fucking wave of BTs. I just imagine if someone finds that to recover it for the resources. It's just the mangled corpse of the intern there who strapped there for the blood. <laughs> yeah, there's my lodger over there. We're on the white path. We are going back to Central North. I'm going to stop off at the other base in like. Requis I was going to stop there anyway, but like we might as well requisition a bike now while we're at it. Mm -hmm. No, I can't wait to say, God damn it, Porter. You've wrecked two bikes within a week. But the cargo is A-OK. -okay. It's true. You have delivered every piece of cargo absolutely perfectly and on time. So you are a three-star Porter out of five. So I'll let that slide this time. Wait, what does it take to get a five-star? Nobody knows. You can't afford five star. Alright, what about four star? Well, there is one way to become four star porter, but you probably wouldn't want to hear it. I want to hear it. You have to sing Fifi. <laughs> and also make sure you sing the Nicki Minaj part. Oh god, no! Right, if I just am. 
We have two climbing ropes for people trying to go the other way. Because that will help greatly with the other mission if some fuckwit tries to do it like the same way I was going to do it. Yeah. Now, the other portal near the start was able to do it, Sing Fifi. Um, that's why the BTs attacked him first, because he had the higher power level. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to kill himself, but yeah. They oh, were yeah. focusing on him first, because uh, they knew he had, he had the higher power level. I often tend to forget that the English dub of Rohan's the same guy that just Broly. <laughs> until you remind me. I wasn't even talking about it. No, but you mentioned power levels, which reminded me of the usual fucking joke we make. Ah, yeah, so, oh, thank you for reminding me this uh, guy's the same voice editor. Okay, how do I remind you? It's complicated. Alright. It really I'll is, take it. It really is complicated that we talk to me, because my brain goes off in weird fucking directions. J just to whoever comes along next and finds my large trail of climbing ropes, you're fucking welcome. Uh, dear. Just because that will save a bit of stamina going halfway up the hill. Need to bring more ropes next time. Can you just put down the ladder to help? I'm fucking soup. <laughs> yeah, you could have just put down the ladder and angle. That helped a grip. It's fine, there's another up there. That way I dumped on the ladder, huh? I can move my arms and legs freely again. What's this magic? I think we, we Alcoholic have, beverages, oh. We have more important things to worry about, namely the fact that we're going for fucking mule country now. Yeah, but that said, you should dump your cargo, and like I said last time, be like weighted clothing. Uh, it'll have like Spartan strength. Yeah, uh, but that, that doesn't help when um, we actually have to carry some of the cargo through the mule country. No. A lot of additional fucking cargo appeared now. Nice. Wait, may I receive from Benjamin Hango, taking care of your BB? He's fine. Then you just see there's like a rock through his face when you face plant it one time. Eh, uh, you can mock it off. It's fine, do you know why? This is bulletproof glass! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I just remember it when they remade it. They actually had Snake shoot it first, so it made more sense, rather than uh, Liquid just suddenly shouting it. Yeah, like, his delivery, like, I love Cam Clock, but his delivery of that line is so fucking weird in the original. Okay, like, it, it's like when, you, when you're when raising something and you forget to put a space in the middle of your sentence. Because he, he literally just goes from his previous sentence to Snake, this is bulletproof glass. Snake, this is bulletproof glass. Like, that, that's with, why in like, the remake they had to make him shoot first, otherwise it just made no fucking sense. Look, there's a hand grab the particles. There we go. Oh, so the spray is made by using the particles. Yeah. So, uh... Which spray? The anti-time spray, I imagine. Yes, yeah, that... Yeah, that's where he used to restore himself to normal time. That, that's that, the over sprays is yarn. No, but that's it, uh, when... Oh, I keep thinking quiet, uh, long game. Fragile? Fragile says, look, I don't approve of what you're doing, but I'm going to ask for the rest of the stuff in that barbell. I got a lot of old flesh to go. And he's like, uh, in a cave just spraying it all over. Ah, uh, that really takes the years off. How many years have you got to go before it's normal again? About 15. <laughs> oh, cool. The metals respawned over by the clusterfuck of Lazarus. Yeah. Youthful glow. Is that her quest? The reason why she has that company is to uh, afford to buy enough spray to make herself normal again. Future! <laughs> Future! It'll be quicker if you put it down put that stuff in and then came back for it. It would probably honestly be quicker <laughs> if you just put that one down. You mean you don't want to watch him struggle? Just to take a whole episode just to, for him to get in the building. <laughs> Fine. Looks like you've got an empty container there, huh? Feel free to submit junk like that.
health foods. Are we just going to name this episode, I'm sworn to carry your burdens? <laughs> or Lydia's Revenge? Who's <laughs> Lydia again? Um, the pack mule in Skyrim, as people call her. <laughs> Basically, the first companion you canonically get unless you do a load of side quests. Yeah, sure. Let's go. And she's supposed to be like a combat, a help in combat. But many people just use her as a second inventory, just to dump stuff in her uh, inventory. Just says that okay, you stand in this corner and don't do anything. I'll handle everything. Because she's extremely aggressive, even when you're trying to sneak kill enemies. If she sees any enemy, she'll just rush in and start slashing. Oh dear. So anyway, I start. Yeah, it's like that thing from I think it's uh, not uh, not Parks right. It's always done in Philadelphia. So anyway, I started blasting. You can't do like it's very hard to do anything sneaky with her because she'll just run in. Resin, if we can't make any more of. <laughs> I'll never get over that! Can you imagine it, uh, the people saying, The prison still looks as youthful as ever. I don't know how she does it. Yeah, uh, she's full of energy, so spry and everything. <laughs> she'll probably be a uh, prison for a long time. I think she'll get re elected. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think she will. Oh dear. Right, I'm up, right. Luden's fun's still not open, so we'll entrust all of that shit. <laughs> the legend returns. How you doing, Sam? You trying to put the rest of us to shame? <laughs> Maybe if you left the building every once in a while. Oh look, I'm not gonna leave the building, but. I'll but, still talk shit to you, Sam. But don't worry, you're still invited to the parties. The next one's actually tomorrow night. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. But what's with the other shit that came in? The stuff for the actual mission. That was just lost cargo that we picked up along the way. Oh. Uh, what about the garage? It might be able to request one there. Well, no, could we come down to the garage and have a vehicle? I'll sort this out in a second. Let journey. me just deliver that and then get them. Deliver that and then rest to get all the BT gun coffin. No, but um, IGN posted a guise on um, how to fight the BTs, but um, they accidentally misspelled it. Because they capitalized the entire thing instead of just BT. Yeah. Which led to people joking that IGN was posting guides on how to kill the Korean pop group, BTS. Oh, dear. The weirdest thing is you can buy Funko Pop figures of them in the local Asda. I'm not even joking. I'm sorry, it's just I see some weird shit when I go out and about on my morning shop sometimes. Like, was that an anti loitering sign or just please do not sleep outside? We have rooms you can rent for free. Just sleep there. Probably. Or please don't sleep outside, it attracts the ghosts. <laughs> Remember, they can smell your time penis. <laughs> some bad news. I think that bike might be gone forever. What? Like, can we not have the ability to fabricate our own yet? Ah, oh, great. It... 
I think it's. I love the fucking loop. We need that. <laughs> like, oh god, my bike route looks psychotic. Well, you were hyped up on like two monsters at the time, and Crazy Blood. Oh, that's a good point. What? <laughs> that look. Sorry, I'm just gonna skip these to, for the sake of bravacy. Uh, I can't imagine. Uh, uh, say, no, Peter said. Now we don't ask any money, but can you please donate an entire liter of blood for your stay, per day? <laughs> what you mean I have to donate an entire liter of blood every time I want to sleep here? Yes. There's not a fucking trap in Saul. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Just checking. I wasn't misremembering. So, is there an intern who says, alright, looks like uh, room 23A is out of cans of monster. That's not very hospitable, let me just refill that. There is, um, have you seen The Rum Diary? Uh, no, that's it, another... It's a film of another Hunter S. Thompson novel that's not fair and loathing, but, um, there's a, big, there's a bit at the beginning where he joins this newspaper office and, um, his boss has been paying for his hotel for like two or three weeks or something and the first thing he does is chew him out for racking up a load of stuff on the mini bar and his reaction is just it's not complimentary no it's not complimentary you idiot <laughs> oh two bars so your stamina's increased by 20% yes this was the plan and you can do a third one for an extra 5% no I'm good I just needed to shoot up two but what about the extra one Extra five percent. We'll save that for later. <laughs> Good to attempt that shot. Why the fuck was that what the camera chose to pick up on? <laughs> yeah, as I said, it's like that um, NSP music video. <laughs> Ultimate sandwich. Or, you know, eating food in the shower. Please tell me you've seen that one. No. They have Markiplier in it, of all people. Because one of the jokes is that Danny gets a fucking mariachi band in the shower while he's trying to eat a full English. Uh, uh, yeah, and Marker players in a lot of their music videos, actually. It's weird. Well, is he animating it, or...? No, 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 like, the live-action ones. Oh, right, because I can't remember if he animates a lot of his own videos, or am I think of another YouTuber. No, it's Ego Raptor, who's Aaron from Game Grumps, that yeah. does the animations. No, market player's the over one. Yeah, uh, one of the Let's Players. Oh, come out he did a lot of his own animations. <laughs> ah, orange soda! <laughs> so he has a piss grenade. Yes, now it really is Jurassic. <laughs> he just let vials of his own piss Another he can throw around. Another of our new EX grenades. The number one. Yeah! So named because it contains a vaporized extract formulated from your urine. <laughs> Norman Reedus just looks so fucking dumb with that man's explanation. It contains a higher concentration of your fluids, which should make it more effective against BTs. Whenever you avail yourself of your private room's facilities, we will collect the results and produce additional units for your use. So you needn't worry about uh, running out. Now, on that note, we need you to uh, uh, contribute some more fluids. Don't worry, there's an intern that's going to be coming which will help you with that. Just wait until I start producing grenade number five. <laughs> <laughs> the selection goes all the way up to 11, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's like, yeah, I'm just trying to say, when he wants a lot of things, an intern will help you out. It'll be like that scene from... I was that Leslie Nielsen film series. Um, Naked Gun. Yeah, Naked Gun number three. Where he's in the sack, where he's in the clinic for the sperm donation. Yeah, <laughs> where he has like several like uh, twenty different jars of samples. I just imagine that's going to be like, I'm impressed, Sam. That's the most samples anyone's ever given in a week, and you managed to do it in only two hours. Yep. You just wait. After I cut slam a couple of monsters, we're doing that again. I think I lost some grenades when we fell off the cliff. But didn't you just get refilled? Didn't you? No, no, that was an, I was carrying a number two grenades on me just in case we need it. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I can run the rest of the journey. 
but how will you do it without your uh, jars of piss? <laughs> no, we've got a jar of piss. I just okay. took them. I was going to swap the grenades out, but it turns out we weren't even carrying the grenades. So I wanted to swap out. Have a pleasant journey. Yeah, just matter. He has like little bars. We just throw them at the BTs. <laughs> Team Fortress Two style. No, but that is what it is. <laughs> Oh my god, it's his, even glowing. his piss is glowing. Sam, get that checked out. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm pretty sure, like, uranium piss is a sign of super diabetes. <laughs> Maybe it's a side effect of dying. What, you get uranium piss? <laughs> yes. Oh, Christ, right. Yeah, okay, we just go on the straight line. Cross the bridge, straight line, pick up additional cargo. And maybe, just maybe, we won't fuck up and hit the BCs while we're on camera Sam, this time. It's hard, oh. Your friend and fellow doom sufferer. <laughs> uh, um, our affliction, such as it is, began with the beach, or rather, our discovery of it. Once the question of life after death was answered only by religion and philosophy. But when we learned of the beach's existence, death became something more tangible, knowable. The living soon walked the shores of the afterlife, while dead things, beached things, began to find their way back. And then came dooms, and with it a host of theories advanced by physicians and psychologists, desperate to explain the world's newest mystery. The symptoms were duly categorized and stratified into levels. Yeah, he's only level two, isn't But he? repatriates like you are a singularly rare breed, worthy of a classification all your own. The specialists must have been climbing over one another to get a look at you. <laughs> I wonder what they found. Reese was not lying. He really is Mr. Exposition. Now, I thought they found the beach after Death Stranding. Maybe they found the beach before it. What, like they found the beach and then used it to engineer a super nuke or something? Or maybe, um, because they started looking how to get into the afterlife. They just opened a hole and the afterlife could come back. Makes sense. And that caused the death stranding. Makes about as much sense as anything else in this series, let's be honest. Well, as much sense as nanomachines and arctic, uh, no, yeah, exactly. bacteria that can form suits of armor. Exactly. I love the fact that like, you didn't want to use nano machines so you just made up the parasites and did make them do the exact same fucking thing. No, but um, they take the mick out of this in Borderlands free of all things. Really? C um, okay, did you play with any of the DLC? You didn't play with the Baroness in pre-sequel, did you? No. Okay, so to make a long story short, she comes back in Borderlands free, but like she sided with the villains this time. Because uh, didn't say they paid more or something? Yeah, but, um, so, one of the things she does is she has the ability to actually just throw ice out of her hands, and it's explained in universe as being nanomachines. <laughs> and, like, when they ask her, how can you do that, she just sarcastically says nanomachines in years of practice. <laughs> and that's all the explanation we get. Oh, also, she quotes Frozen, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Oh dear. Like, somehow Borderlands 3 is more self aware than Borderlands 2 was. And Borderlands 2 was already ridiculously self aware. What, with Facebook shooting things? Yep. Oh. Yeah, it's like a minute long dialogue at least if you just listen to it. I think in my favourite one so far is you run into a bandit called Completely Sane Steve. And in his side quest is he wants you to get rid of him. Um, Okay, Claptrap wants his tinfoil hat, but before you can get it, you have to destroy the satellite dishes, sending the voices into his head. But then in a shocking plot twist, it turns out the voices were what was making him sane. What? Because he was having, like, old 60s TV commercials broadcast in his head. And he goes back to being a regular bandit. Once you, um... Shoot the satellite dishes. I remember in 2 there was a side quest where a, a dead bandit said, if anyone can hear this, I want you to do me a favour. And it's the side quest, they lead you into a trouser. Haha, <laughs> I, I killed you from beyond the grave. 
I think no, there was a funnier version of that in the pre-sequel, though it's him. I need you to find this guy and tell him he's a dick. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then like like the, he starts crying, doesn't he? Yeah, the guy comes out and he looks like he's about to be an actual mini boss, but then he just like no <laughs> Please, game, give me a break from being attacked by ghosts for five fucking minutes. Uh-oh. Five fucking minutes of not being attacked by the BTs, that's all I ask. So, I wonder if the BTs stand for bridge tethers, or...? Let's go with that until they offer us a better explanation. <laughs> no. What? You're gonna climb up the cliff, aren't you? So, breath attacks the BT. Just climb the mountain. That'll make me breathe less. No, this is actually skewing because we're on the BT though. I just want to go up and I can put some rope down the other side. BCs, Butterfield interns. That will be BIs. No, but Butter Brian Butterfield's so incompetent, he's capitalised the T in interns instead of the I. Oh, God. <laughs> and you know, like, if they were still doing sketches, that would be one. Wait. Prototype motor. Oh, it's destroyed, so. What, you're just going to urinate into the area of the BTs or something? No, I forgot to bring climbing ropes. I was going to climbing anchor down very, very fucking gently. I wonder if anyone's done that. Gone to the edge of where the shadows are and just uh, take a look into the shadows. Because it's a bit where they can't get you, isn't it? Once you're outside, they're kind of oily. No, I think they can still move outside of that. That's just the effective range to give you a minute to run. Oh. I don't want to jinx it. We're doing very well so far. Actually, I've, sorry, I have to... Fucking stop in the middle of this to repair stuff. Let, let me just stop for a minute and do my hair. Just massive kind of hairspray. Ah, there's one. I have to protect my image. What if, uh or something, uh, dies or something, he's like in the private room saying, Order, <coughs> order, I'm haunting you. No! And then Dabman comes in and makes stuff even fucking worse. Who would Den be? Mr. Satan? Yes. Sorry, I realised I don't talk much during these BT segments, I just like... I get fucking fixated. is isn't trying to, like, concentrate as hard as possible. Is it because last time we tried running it and... Last time we tried biking it and it fell immediately. And I escaped the shorts of puss by, like, the hair of our fucking teeth. Please. Oh, why run? 
Sorry, that wasn't me. That was him. It stood up automatically after we picked the thing up. Run. I can't run until we get out of the black goo. Sure, I went to pick the thing up and it automatically stood him up and then he just like, you know, stopped walking properly. Now we have all sorts of different rocks here, at different angles. So what we need to do is we need to find a nice spot, half underwater, and run into that wall for, you know, maybe 12 hours. <laughs> that way we can hit each of these rocks at just the right angle, or we can speed up there without jumping. Problem is if we start running, it will alert them to where we are. Crouch, you fucking idiot. I just wanted to try and put a bunch of ladders down to circumvent some of the rocks. They're fucking closing in on us. Medical instruments. How many medical samples does he carry? What? Oh yeah, he's carrying his own uh, samples, isn't he, to create new weapons? And over medical samples. Mm -hmm. And it unloads it as a, wow, there are hundreds of samples here. Wait, they're all yours? Oh yeah. Well, at least the time rain made them, you know, fresh, so they haven't aged. Oh no, they're all from the same day. And just the hologram just turns to look at them uh, in horror, just say, you're one strange man. Don't know anyone who has as much stamina as you. Look, I'll be honest with you, I accidentally dropped all of the samples while trying to transport them, so I had to refill them myself. <laughs> well, he just had to stop playing the countryside and just... <laughs> well, he strategically put the samples around himself so that the BTs couldn't get near him because, of course, his influence. So well, the BTs just have to watch from a distance while he's refilling the samples. God damn it. Very gently. Very gently. Maybe in a minute we'll actually try some of the grenades when I stop, like, panic sneaking. Oh, gosh. Right, it's under the port city. Uh, it's probably one of the Great Lakes. No, it must be. It's what, Minnesota? <laughs> yeah, we'll find out in a minute. Sorry, I'm just like, I got so fucking focused on trying to do this. But at least we're not going to the deep south or anything. Yet. Because I doubt even foreign DNA samples will help with air diversity. 
They tend to keep things uh, in house. <laughs> what is your hatred of the deep south? <laughs> Oh, just some alienates half the audience. Can what, you think our, half our audience are from Alabama? Or something? Half our global audience. Okay, fair enough. Maybe half our American audience, so two people, so only one of them is offended. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, so... Oh, Make the, I, I the solution always, let's just jump off a cliff. I saw how small the drop was. It was only six foot. Yeah, but it's fine. Like, I'm fucking invincible. Another trip. Another one. And, and another, another one. And another. I'm fucking invincible as long as I hold the shoulder buttons down. Am I gonna have to get the engine? Look at him! Look at him go! <laughs> <laughs> He's got a propeller up his ass. <laughs> Am I just gonna have to ask the engineer to get that scene from? I think it's DJ Khalid doing another one. Just a clip of you face planting. While we're at it, just put the fucking Mario invincibility music over Sam running down that cliff. <laughs> Nice. So what, he's just throwing it above his own head specifically to land on there? Cause he's yeah, like, Sam's the missing member of Do Perfect in the trick shot videos. Oh my god. Can I just say, I was watching them again recently, I yep. found my favourite fucking one, where one of them throws a frozen pizza halfway, like, across two rooms into the oven. Oh like, that one's my favourite, because it's so chore shit. Actually, frozen were better than fresh. Mm. Uh, I remember they bro uh, they broke a bunch of world records, sporting world records. Mainly, mainly basketball ones. Nice. And American football ones. Then this YouTuber and his team, um, Mr. Beast, broke some of Do Perfect's records. Is Mr. Beast the one who goes around handing out money? Yes. Okay. He uh, he's done like two different videos of him just going to random restaurants asking for water. <laughs> Never patch this out, Kojima. And then he tips increasing amounts. He starts tipping like five dollars. Then he starts tipping thousands of dollars to different restaurants. Good lord. At one point he even buys, like, uh, I think, a bar of gold. <laughs> it's only like the size of his thumb, but even that is worth like several thousand dollars because of the price of gold. So he just tips that at one point. Fucking hell. I have no idea how he makes his money. He can't just be from his like um, clothing sales. Because he's uh, one of the guys behind Team Trees. Mm -hmm. oh. He's a Captain Disillusion, a member of that then as well. Uh, a bunch of YouTubers have done videos on it. Okay. I'm not sure if... I'm pretty sure ones. I'm pretty sure Disillusion's like in on it as well. No oh, thank God. I can finally get some... Wait, 50,000? And it's a city, that's not that much. Well, yeah, it's post-apocalypse. Look, some of the roads regrown into hill. Either that or Tony Robinson was having an off day. I realise you have no context for that. So no, that... I'm just saying Tony Robinson. Is that the self-help guru? I think it's someone else. No, Tony Robinson's the guy who played Baldrick in Blackadder. Oh, I'm thinking Tony Robbins. Because him... Tony Robinson had a series he did um, the worst jobs in England and one of them is him. He does the thing where you lay the fucking road tarmac. Oh, I thought you won. Uh, but like the... the one where he's walking across England. No, he's got, he's got another one where he just like reviews really, really crap jobs. And um, the one he reviews in particular, the one he does in particular, is he looks into him, the people whose job it is not to lay the road grit, the people who are supposed to like pat the tar down to make it stay the shape of the road. Yep. Well, I remember he uh, a few years ago, only two or three, he did this where he walked across uh, the top, uh, like northern England. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he met the guy who taught Ron Atkinson history in, his, uh, in school. Wouldn't surprise me. Just by pure accident. Oh, dear, right, Jesus Christ, let's hand some of the stuff in and then, um. Oh, yeah, I was doing some reading. Apparently, um, you get the ability to carry more stuff later. So, you know. We're gonna have, like, the leaning. Like, if that's true, we're gonna have the leading fucking Tower of Pisa packages by the end of this. Be like that bit from. It was a film we watched it was written by the Monty Python crew, but wasn't Monty Python. Um, the guy who had very specific immortality powers. Um, where he's only immortal if no doctor concludes he's dead. 
Munchausen? Baron Munchausen? Oh, no, 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 no. It, yeah, it was, um... His friend. Yeah, the adventures of Baron Munchausen, and he doesn't want Daughters to look at him because if they declare him dead, then the Grim Reaver comes after him. No, so his friend, is it the strongest man in the world? Because he wins a bet against some Middle Eastern Sultan. So that you can, uh, let's take, the, take everything you can carry so that you just carry. Only, uh, you can take as much treasure as, as one man can carry. Yeah. To get this friend who's the strongest man, well, who just carries an entire room's worth of gold. He's basically looks like, this is like level one yeah. to carry. He's like level five. <laughs> Hang on. the border, the one man army sent to do the work of a team. You and your two feet to fill all their boots. I just realized dying took our hat away. No, it can't be. I won't lie. God damn, Grim Reaper stealing my hat. The camera just smash cuts and it's the ser and like the Cerberus, but like with just one hat on the middle head. Oh, I was just wondering, is it uh, just gonna cut to a scene where it shows his like broken body at the bottom of the cliff, <laughs> where just the hat get smoked, <laughs> just like the corpse with the uh, hat and get smoked. I'm just gonna imagine the Daft Stranding. Has like the same Grim Reaper as the House Pets comic. I, I just imagine, like, cause, cause he just randomly comes back from the dead whenever the fuck he wants. Yep. I just imagine that he drives the motorcycle off the cliff and like his smoldering corpse is there and the camera just smash cuts to the afterlife and he's just there with the Cerberus who now has his hat and it's just like, you know, you kind of need to bring two more of these if you want to bribe me rice. I thought the hat was the reason they're trying to keep him there, saying, no, you don't no, come back. No, the hat's bribery. <laughs> Kiss him. Oh, because it's a rare item. Yeah, it's a rare item, because it's prehistory. Oh, what, is it special one because it's signed by Mr. 45? Yeah. I say, like, all right, we'll let you leave, but you have to give us the hat. All right, deal. The next time you die, you bring me two more. <laughs> so what is it going to be like Cerberus like that dragon from the recent uh, Godzilla film which just like the three heads one goofy and the goofy one's wearing the MAGA hat yeah <laughs> oh dear wait are those they contain the Wi-Fi password don't they yeah it's the seven keys to the internet <laughs> you're supposed to hand them to seven individual people for quits no, he is. He uh, has to go to seven stations, doesn't he? Or oh, however many. Yeah, but you're supposed to have them so that one person each has a key. Right. No, wait, that's probably what Amelie did, but she lost this. She's the backup. <laughs> oh, wait. How are we coastal when we're in the middle of the state? It's a port town. Uh, yeah, port town. There must be... Don't question it. We'll must have be been pretty big lake. We'll figure it out later. So no, what? We're almost in Texas. Wait. We're in what? Oklahoma at the minute. Probably. Where'd you get that? That little guy. Same as mine. Where the hell did you get it? I thought he was talking about the baby yeah. for a second. Yeah, I can't really say. But the little guy. He came with the pod, if you got to know. And who'd you get the pod from? Igor, from Corpse Disposal. My little brother. So, what? He just gave one of these to you. Sure. Then cuts back to him trying to kill himself. <laughs> yeah, sure, he just gave it to him. At the end. We were moving a body. Things went to shit. There's BTs everywhere. And one of them grabbed him. So he told me to take it and run. That's uh, right. So what's your story? You lived through a catastrophe like that only to keep on doing the same work? It's not like I have over job prospects at the moment. <laughs> And then Sam just gets a phone call and it's him from the future. You know, your mother tells people that you're a teacher, right? No one respects a courier. No, couriers are like, uh, celebrities in this No, I know, I just wanted to throw in the infamous quote, though. <laughs> What's that from again? Infamous. From the Castler boss fight at oh, the end. Oh, yep, yep. No, it's also mentioned at the start of the second one, isn't it? Became a courier just to annoy his parents. 
Yeah, but one of Castler's specific taunts is pe your mother tells people you're a teacher because no one respects you. Oh. Good, 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 good. Emergency good. fuel. For a bunch of gasoline. Probably. Sam, you've done it. Port Knot City is back on the Help me, Sam, you're my only hope. Community. There we go. It took us like five episodes to we made a Star Wars joke at last. Is that legal? Stuff. With enough time and enough cargo printers, they'll be able to build ships. We're gonna freeze Wait, print Bosey Mook Boatface? Of course. All because you led the way. I wonder, are they going to 3D print in Port Knot City? So it's sitting there in a lake. Anything are they going to get to the coast? Because <laughs> we're not even on the but south coast, we're in the middle. The don't, don't, it's fine, don't cross it. That's what I was thinking, are we in like, Minnesota <laughs> or something? The Great Lakes. Yeah, that would make more down. sense. Waiting for you to take the first step and connect them to the chiral network. I know you can reach them. Make us whole again. Thanks. One more C in the UCA, huh? So, you fix it across the lake and head west? Yeah. We got a boat? No, not for years now. Terrorists took out everything, bridges, that floats. Only boat in town belongs to a private courier. Private courier? Don't tell me. Fragile Express? That's the one. I already spoke at their rep. I'm having them load the boat with some of the supplies you brought us. I'll bet the folks in Lake Knot will be tickled pink to see someone come into port. Been a while, I expect. Head on down to the harbor when you're ready. It's right outside the distro center. Don't worry, Port Knot never gets the rain. Feel free to rest up in your room before you head out. Right, let's just um, dump some cargo and then um, refill the stamina. Mm -hmm. I know we're asked it first. Okay, I'll dump the cargo later then. How much fucking blood are you giving, Sam Christ? Well, yeah. Is that the payment? Instead of money, they want a litre of blood every, every day he stays? What's it? <laughs> uh, 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 pint of blood, sorry. Uh, 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 wait, so if they stay here a week, I have to give up seven pints of blood? Yep, those are the rules. Who made the rules? I did. Just You're now. a dick. <laughs> <laughs> nope, going straight back to the Frank's game. Produced five grenades. You're fucking filthy, Sam. I'm just waiting for that to be one of his lines. No, if it'll be five grenades, it's because he slams so many monsters. Well, this is just, like, the zero grenades are from the filth on his skin. Why the fuck does he get out of the shower like he's in a TSA search? Because they had, uh, it was drying him. Didn't you hear it? Oh, okay. Yeah. You could hear it. Um, Not on this TV, I couldn't. I'm further away from the TV than you, and I can hear it. Yeah, but I've got a shit ear, so, you know. Look, I know we're doing this on the Mac Teeny, but we've hooked up to, like, uh, speakers bigger than the Mac Teeny itself. Brought you an astronaut. Major Tom? Major Tom. Mankind can go anywhere. Even out of space. You'll be out of there in no time. And the second all this is over, I'm going to take you wherever you want to go. I still think that he's a Porsche just because Mickelson's his father. Because it would make a loss of sense. Or maybe he doesn't know. No, I don't think he knows, but I think subconsciously, 
he's trying to find him or something? No, I think subconsciously he's a porter because of all the talk of I'll take you wherever you want to go. Ah, okay. And on that note, let's leave that there. We'll see you all next time.